Welcome to the Bloodborne Pathogens Training Module. This module will cover the following topics. What bloodborne pathogens are, common methods of transmission, risks of exposure, methods of prevention, and what to do if exposed. Bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms carried by the blood that cause disease in people. These viruses or bacteria can cause illness, injury to the body, and even death. Because of the danger posed by bloodborne pathogens, the government regulatory agency known as OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, has issued safety rules known as the Bloodborne Pathogen Standard to help increase awareness and prevent the spread of disease. Although there are many bloodborne pathogens, the next sections will cover three that are the biggest concern. Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, and HIV. The Hepatitis B virus, or HBV, infects the liver. Most people recover from Hepatitis B within a few weeks or months and suffer no long-term problems. Once you've had it once and recovered, you can't get it again. Sometimes, though, the infection may last longer or never go away. In these cases, it can lead to scarring of the liver, known as cirrhosis, liver cancer, liver failure, and death. There is no cure for hepatitis B. However, there are tests to determine if a person has it or has had it in the past, treatments to help people with long-term HBV, and a vaccine consisting of three separate shots taken over several months to decrease the chances of getting it. If an employer can reasonably anticipate that a worker may come into contact with bloodborne pathogens while performing normal job tasks, the employer must offer the hepatitis B vaccination to the worker. The vaccination is a series of three shots taken over several months. The employer must provide training about the vaccine and how it works and make the vaccination available within the first 10 days of the job assignment that potentially exposes the worker. A worker can choose to not take the vaccination, but must sign a form if that's the case. The worker can later reconsider and request that the employer provide the vaccine at no cost. Hepatitis C virus, or HCV, is another virus that infects the liver. It is the most serious of the hepatitis viruses. Many people infected with hepatitis C show no symptoms and don't know they have it. They can be infected for decades before signs of serious liver damage are discovered. Eventually, the disease can cause cirrhosis of the liver, liver cancer, liver failure, and death. There are no vaccines or cures for HCV but there is a test to determine if a person has it, and there are treatments to help infected people. Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV, is the virus that leads to AIDS. The virus attacks the body's immune system. People can be infected with the HIV virus, yet not know they're infected and appear healthy. Eventually, in some cases years later, the body becomes so weak it cannot fight off other diseases. This weakened condition is known as AIDS. Without treatment, most people die. There are no vaccines or cures for HIV, but there is a test to determine if a person has it and treatments to help infected people. Bloodborne pathogens can be present in body fluids including blood, semen, vaginal fluids, fluids surrounding the lungs, heart, and joints, and any body fluid contaminated with blood. You can get infected through sexual contact, sharing syringes or other needles, puncture wounds from contaminated medical needles, 
or other contaminated sharp objects, contact between infected body fluids and mucous membranes, such as the eyes, nose, and mouth, and contact between infected body fluids and damaged skin, including cuts, scrapes, open sores, and acne. Because a virus must contact your blood or certain body fluids to infect you, the chances of being infected during normal activities at work are very low. You cannot get these diseases by shaking hands, being coughed on, or sharing public facilities like work equipment, restrooms, or drinking fountains. However, you can be infected if you come into contact with blood and body fluids while helping someone who's sick or injured. Because people can be infected for years and show no symptoms, Always treat blood and body fluids as if they are infectious and take precautions to avoid exposure. Preventative measures are designed for your protection and help prevent the transmission of bloodborne pathogens. In order to prevent exposure, it is extremely important to take precautionary actions, including preventative housekeeping and work practices, use of protective barriers proper hygiene and waste disposal. The next section will discuss these precautions in detail. It is important to maintain a protective barrier between you and potentially infected material in order to protect yourself. Always wear disposable gloves or use a protective barrier to avoid direct contact with blood or body fluids. If necessary, put on safety goggles and an apron or smock to protect yourself and your clothes from contamination. Avoid unprotected mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation by using the protective barriers found in first aid kits. Finally, when removing protective barriers, avoid touching your skin with contaminated items and properly dispose of them in red biohazard bags. Using these measures will significantly reduce your risk of exposure to bloodborne pathogens. It is extremely important to stay alert when handling trash or working around sharp objects. Sharp items such as coffee can lids, broken glass, and knife blades can easily cut or puncture the skin and should be disposed of properly. Always use gloves when picking up sharp objects or use a brush to sweep items into a dustpan. All spills of blood or other body fluids visibly contaminated with blood should only be cleaned by a person trained or authorized to do so. Additionally, any surface that could have been soiled with blood should be disinfected with a mixture of one part bleach to ten parts water. When working in potentially contaminated areas, keep your hands away from your eyes, nose, and mouth. After exiting a potentially contaminated area, remove your protective clothing and wash your hands thoroughly. Hand washing is a critical prevention measure taken to stop the transmission of bloodborne pathogens. Wash your hands immediately after contact with blood or body fluids, even if gloves or other barriers are used. When washing your hands, use a soft antibacterial soap if possible. Keep your hands under the running water for at least 20 seconds and then dry them with disposable towels. When cleaning blood or body fluids, place any potentially contaminated item in a red bag marked with the universal biohazard symbol. Bags used in the cleanup process should be double bagged to guard against possible leakage and deposited in the medical department for proper disposal. A sharp is a medical needle or other sharp object used to puncture the skin. Accidental needle stick injuries are especially common in healthcare industries, but they're also a real and growing risk in manufacturing and other industries, as more people with diabetes and other conditions use sharps to help regulate their conditions. If you use sharps at work, tell your supervisors so they can install proper sharps disposal containers. Always put used sharps in these containers. And even if you don't use sharps, be careful in bathrooms or when handling trash to avoid getting stuck by a sharp that hasn't been disposed of carefully.
In a situation involving exposures to blood or potentially infected material, remain calm and take the following steps. Wash exposed skin with non-abrasive soap and water. Flush exposed mucous membranes with water for at least 15 minutes. Remove contaminated gloves, clothes, or shoes as soon as possible and place them in a red biohazard bag. Report the incident to your supervisor and report to the medical department within 24 hours of exposure for further testing. Exposure to bloodborne pathogens can be avoided. It is essential for all personnel to recognize these hazards and know the appropriate steps to take in order to prevent contamination. Take notice of where PPE, or personal protective equipment, and emergency kits are stored in your area. Stay alert and never take unnecessary risks. Avoid letting blood contact your skin, eyes, nose, mouth, and clothes. Finally, always follow the proper procedures if there is an exposure incident. Following the proper guidelines and procedures can make a safer work environment for everyone.